So this is the Pro, the case in Pro. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into the menu. You're going to go into user settings. You're going to scroll down to proximity and you're going to click the center button once. That turns it on or off, depending on what your setting is. So if, it, if it's on, and then what you'll see is as you're spray, spraying and you're applying the gas, this shows up, all right? I'm not attached to anything, I'm gonna turn this on. So you see the proximity sensor, what you want it to do is you want it to be right there. And it's reading the temperature as well. I'm not attached to any gas, so that's why it's so quiet. So as you move closer, it will start beeping at you and turn on. Now, if you go into user settings and you turn the proximity sensor off, so what will happen when we scroll out of this is you'll see a big X over the proximity. So now, in this case, it's not going to turn off if you go too close to the skin. So, as you can see, my hand is totally over it and the timer is still running. So, you run the risk of damaging the skin by bringing the gas too close to the skin when your proximity sensor is turned off. When you are actually using the device, I need you to look both at the skin and at the device. So, as you are taking the machine and moving it over the skin you want to see the crystallization forming but as you move it away you want to see that that crystallization goes away so that it is um, quickly not it's not staying cold for too long so typically here in Florida we do have an issue with humidity and um, the reason why that can become an issue is because the machine will actually freeze the moisture in the air and it can build up condensation on the skin. So typically what I do is add about 30 seconds. Um, that's when the patients will start to feel what I refer to as the pricklies. And what that is, is actually ice shards hitting their skin. So I usually pause the machine, I will wipe the patient's skin down, and then I will also scrape off the nozzle, which you'll see forms condensation and ice crystals on the nozzle. So I will go ahead and scrape that off as well. So after I go ahead and scrape off the condensation that's built up on the nozzle, I will then um, reapply the case into the area that I'm treating. So, but again, you have to maintain and keep checking to make sure that, that skin is staying dry. If condensation builds up on the skin and there's moisture on the skin, you run the risk of burning the skin. And that um, can cause some unsightly appearance to your clients. Um, it does, in fact, take quite some time and realize that if you've gotten your patient, if you've burnt your patient to this point, it really, 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 really hurts. They've gone through quite a bit of pain and I'm surprised that they haven't said something to you um, during the treatment. If you do, in fact, burn somebody, then you need to follow the protocols um, and I typically tell individuals to uh, use aloe afterwards. If you even suspect that you've burnt somebody, apply some aloe to the skin.